Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury. I'm JRH and today I'm going to talk about and show you how to wash and lubricate your pellets. So first of all, why would you want to wash and lubricate your pellets? By washing and then re-lubricating them, you remove any lead dust or fragments left over from the manufacturing process, you help to prevent corrosion and you can improve the velocity and accuracy. Now the benefits of doing this are subject to debate, a lot of differing opinion, some people swear by it whilst others say it makes no difference. Personally I don't generally do it, but I know a lot of you do and I like to be inclusive of all shooters in my videos, so that's why I'm doing a video on it. Uh, I should compare the accuracy before and afterwards, and as I said, I don't generally do it, but there is a time when I will do, but I'll come back to that later on. So to wash and lubricate your pellets, you'll need a glass jar or a plastic container or something similar. I've got a large glass jar. Some washing up liquid or liquid soap. Now I like to use Fairy or something similar as it's quite good for removing whatever the pellets are already coated in. You'll need a sieve. Now it's best to use a plastic one as there's less chance of damaging the pellets, and just to remember, should be something not used for food, so I've got mine clearly marked there. You need some hot water, some cold water, a food bag or something similar, some paper towels. Now it's best to use paper towels rather than a tea towel for instance, as it needs to be something lint free that won't shed fluff. A hair dryer. Now it's optional, but will speed things up. Some lubricant. Now, there are a lot of different lubricants you can use, specially designed products, homemade concoctions, or even other readily available products such as furniture polish or beeswax. I'm using some Napier Power Pellet Lube. Now, just a word of warning with the lubricants. If you're lubricating your pellets for use in a spring gun, if you use the wrong type of lubricant or you use too much of it, you can cause the gun to diesel. And for more information on that, check out the other Air Armoury video on dieseling. I'll put a link to that in the description below. And last but not least, you'll need some pellets. And I've got some H&M Sport hollow points. First of all, I'm going to add my hot water to the jar. I'm going to add my washing up liquid. I'm just going to swish that around a bit. Right, next, just empty a tin of pellets into the water. Now, this tin is only 200, and I've already used a few, as you'll see later on. If I was doing a full tin of 500, though, I'd probably do this in a couple of smaller goes. Next, you just want to move the pellets around. Now, you don't want to shake them or anything, as you can damage them, especially their skirts. So just Probably a bit too much water in there, it's going to tip some of that away. That's better. Yes, yeah, so you just want to swirl them around to get the pellets moving. Once you've done that for a while, you're going to tip your pellets into the sieve. Take them off a little bit and then just rinse them to get rid of any bubbles and any of the lead or anything. Okay, might actually get a small amount more of water here. Okay, and once you've rinsed those enough, you just want to lay those out. On some paper towels and spread them out a bit to help them dry off. Now this is the bit where the hairdryer comes in handy. You can use a hairdryer just to help those along. 
I've now finished drying them and put them on a fresh piece of paper towel. Next thing I'm going to do is transfer them all into a food bag. And then add just a few drops of the lubricant. Now you don't need a lot of this, as a little goes a long way. I'm going to seal that up loosely and just going to roll the pellets around, to give them all a nice thin, oops, all coming out the end, uh, roll them around to give them a nice thin, even coating. And again, like with washing the pellets, if I was doing a full tin of 500, I'd do this in a number of smaller goes. Now, before tipping those back into the tin, I'm going to give the tin just a quick wipe, make sure you've got any remaining flecks of lead out of there. And once you've done that, carefully tip the pellets back into the tin. And there you have a tin of freshly cleaned and lubricated pellets. Now to see if that's had any effect on the accuracy. Before the video I fired 10 pellets at a target from a range of 12 or 13 metres using my BSA Mark IV Super Meteor. Now I'll show you that video first, followed by another 10 pellets at another target now they've been cleaned and lubricated. Here we have the two targets. The first from before I washed and lubricated the pellets. Relatively tight grouping around there. That was the first shot I fired, I think. And that one I actually felt myself pull, so we can discount that one. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Compare that to the one after we lubricated them and washed them. And it definitely is a tighter grouping, so it does make some difference. As I said at the beginning of the video, there is a time when I will wash and lubricate pellets, and that's when they've started to oxidise, which is when the lead reacts with oxygen. Now when pellets have oxidised significantly, they will appear white and powdery. Now all lead oxidises over time, but this is more likely to affect older pellets. Some people will just shoot oxidised pellets as they are, however they can dirty and clog up the barrel, especially the rifling, and more importantly the dust can be easily inhaled, which can be harmful to your health. So rather than just waste these pellets, I like to rescue them by washing and lubricating them. Here I have some Marksman appointed pellets. Now I'm not sure how old this tin is, but it's certainly been knocking around for a few years. And as you can see, these pellets have oxidised an awful lot. Very white and powdery. You might even be able to see as well all that extra powder at the bottom of the tin there. Now I'm going to do the same thing as I did to the HN Hollow Points by cleaning them and re-lubricating them. And just looking at the pellets like this is okay, but as I'm going to be handling them and tipping them out, I will be wearing a mask. I've now washed and lubricated these pellets, and as you can see they look a lot better and don't have that dusty coating anymore. You can see the comparison in this photo here. The top half of the pellets as they were, and the bottom half are after I've washed and lubricated them. So there you've seen how to wash and lubricate pellets, and I've discussed when and why you might want to do this. As I've said, I don't generally do this myself, as it's not really worth it for the shooting I do, but as you've seen from the targets, it can improve accuracy, and I might do it if I was entering a competition or something. If you haven't tried this, give it a go and see what you think for yourselves, and I'd like to hear people's opinions on this, whether you do it regularly, or whether you've done it before and you don't think it makes any difference, please leave a comment on the video below. Now I find that modern, good quality pellets are often well enough manufactured and lubricated that you wouldn't need to do this, but it can definitely help older pellets, especially those that have started to oxidise. 
Now this video is intended to just be about washing and lubricating pellets but I suppose as much as anything it's actually a review of the Napier power pellet lube so I shall talk about that very briefly. As well as improving accuracy the packet claims it also cleans, protects from corrosion and increases velocity and it's got endorsements from a lot of leading companies H&N Sport, the RWS, BSA, Air Arms, SMK, Bisley and Falcon. Now this 10 milliliter tub, according to the Napier website, will cost you £3.50 and they also do a 25 milliliter spray which comes in at £8.60. So thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe to the Air Armoury and check out the other videos and until next time, keep your arms in the air.